result to get to the business. And we've got luck, you know, we've had luck come our way as well. Well, things have clearly changed since that interview was done by Emma Simpson in September. With me now to look at how bricks and mortar retailers can survive alongside online stores is digital entrepreneur and former Dragon's Den Dragon, Piers Linney. Thanks for joining us. What do you think has, has changed things so radically? Is it the Arcadia uh, collapse? I think what we need to grasp, I think finally, is that this is a permanent change. You know, technology is changing the landscape. I grew up in a mill town where the multiples out of town retailers, you know, decimated the local high street. And we're going to see the same in terms of online retailers, you know, causing a massive problem for your sort of bricks and mortar retailers. And what COVID has done in many ways, including, you know, me sitting here doing this now, is change the way we do things permanently. Technology is, you know, it's, it's advancing. And we need to think long and hard about what we do about our high streets because, you know, this was a slow motion car crash. And I think now we've seen that pace accelerate. Sadly, if you are an employee, one of 25,000 people who now work for the Arcadia or Debenhams brands thinking my job is about to go, I want to move into the digital retail sector. How, how, how do they do that? Well, so fundamentally, if you look at it side by side, you would have thought there aren't, there aren't the same number of jobs, really, because you, know, you don't need to have these people manning these high, these sort of high street stores. I think, you know, landlords have got a huge issue. I think these large stores we see, you know, littering our high streets, they're never going to be filled again. So if you're looking for a job, obviously you've got skills. You should go and talk to those retailers. But you have to think about, you know, maybe applying your skills in different ways. But again, you know, technology is changing our world. And, you know, some people are going to, they're going to have to reskill. That is going to be very difficult for lots of people, isn't it? It is very, it's very, very difficult. And I think that, what we need to do is, you know, you, you, you hear the people, you know, in one of these businesses talking about the future. The future, and I'm a big fan of small business in the high street and everything, but the future is not bright for bricks and mortar retailers. And we need to start thinking instead of sticking our head in the sand about what we're going to do about it and all those jobs and those people that are working in that sector. You say that the future is not bright and yet, you know, it's been really noticeable, <laughs> I think, to everyone that we do still want and need physical shops, don't we? I mean, the fact that the shops have been closed during lockdown has highlighted how much we need them, surely. Absolutely. So we, we want to shop, but we want to shop in, in, in ways that are easier for us to shop. You can have more stock, actually, in a virtual store. I think what's going to happen, what has to happen, otherwise we won't have a high street, it'll be just full of you know, flats, is that, you know, niche retailers, small retailers, People that add more value for customers are going to have to take over the high street. If you're selling the average product to the average price to the average person, then, you know, sadly, the big boys and <clears throat> girls, they, they're going to take you out. They're going to cause you a permanent problem. How many jobs do you think are at threat from this huge change that we're seeing? I think if you're looking at retail, potentially all the large high street retailers, that's the, they really are experiential, are at risk. I think if you're looking to the wider economy, automation, a software-driven economy. You know, we are, in, in, in my lifetime, going to see a systemic change in how we consume things, how things are produced, and what our high streets look like, and how retail works generally. And we can't keep sticking our head in the sand. We need to think about the opportunity and also what that means in terms of these changes. And just quickly, does government need or local authorities or someone need to pay for people to get, you know, the online skills, the tech skills that they need? If they don't have them, yeah, I think you know, lots whole swathes in some places, you know, whole areas they depend on these particular sectors are going to have to be reskilled in some way. And again, this is something that if, if we leave it for too long, and you know, we, we have this what was a slow motion car crash become a much faster one, and people aren't reskilled, and we're not thinking about how we use these assets and keep these communities together, then we're going to run into a problem that you can't solve overnight. You know, you need a decade, you need a decade run at it to try and get it right and put the policies in place and maybe think about corporate stewardship as well about you know can you just you know rip out cash from companies and, and leave employees with nowhere to go and pension deficits okay Piers Linney many thanks indeed very good to speak to you and get your thoughts thank you well at 11 30 this morning